locked up as I am with everyone in New York City, quarantined as I am with almost everyone in America. But you know, a quarantine in New York City is different than a quarantine in Dubuque, Iowa, where the streets are probably empty at night anyway. Um, it's given me a lot of time to think about free jazz. <laughs> Whether you call it free jazz or avant-garde music or creative improvisation music or instant composing or new thing or the great black jazz or the great black music or new black music because it did start in the early 60s, free jazz, which is just a collective term taken from an early Ornette Coleman record, is moody, is music of such incredible depth, incredible beauty incredible expansiveness often including all musical forms uh, there still remains to a great degree probably more in the US than in Europe a real hedge against free jazz a real barrier for a lot of people Um, and I frankly don't understand it this video was prompted by a couple other videos I've seen online where People say, you know, free jazz doesn't swing. It's not connected to the community, I guess the black community. Um, All these sort of things, it's unmusical. And all those thoughts are just, they're not just wrong, they're incorrect. As I said, there's so much depth in this music, which began, uh, it began post-civil rights movement. Um, It really picked up speed during the Black Power Movement, and I think was more representative of that scene. And like the Black Power Movement, like the Black Panthers, who aided the communities they came out of, fed those communities, educated those communities, in America, the free jazz communities did exactly the same thing. Whether it was the Association for Advanced Creative Musicians, I think that's right out of Chicago, which birthed such amazing musicians as Jack DeJanet, Henry Threadgill, uh, Art Ensemble of Chicago, such an important uh, group um, or bag out of uh, Cleveland, I think. Or uh, there was another group in uh, LA, um, a group out of Detroit, and all of these uh, Amiri Baraki in New York, uh, up st- in, uh, in Harlem, had an outreach. All of these musical collectives taught young people how to play music, brought them up in the tradition. And you can believe they didn't start out with Albert Eiler. They started out, I assume, with uh, Louis Armstrong and traditional jazz. Because in so many ways, free jazz is just traditional jazz, Dixieland, ragtime, through a different lens. Um, It's one of the first things I thought, because you have that same collective improvisation thing going, that same spirit of joy and and revelation and revolution. And what's interesting also to me is that so many, what we think of as classic forms of jazz, have come and gone. Uh, Bebop came and went. Hardbop came and went. Fusion of the 70s came and went. Um, and what's funny is after jazz, after all, a lot of the greats moved to Europe, and then the labels, Columbia, RCA, Novus, tried to resuscitate jazz in the 80s with the Young Lions by just copying hard bop as a formula, which kind of failed. I feel like the only great artist who came out of that whole thing was Roy Hargrove. Free jazz, which started with Eiler and Coltrane and Sanders and Shep, um, and Ornette, obviously, in the early 60s, has never stopped. It has never stopped. In fact, there may be more free jazz in a loose-term musicians now than ever before. Uh, Every year here in New York, we have the Vision Festival, and it is an incredible five or six days of just astounding performances. And those performances, like if you go to see it at Judson Hall around the corner from me, still have that spirit of collectivism and we're all in this together we're all working together that sect was into organic food and living off the grid years before it even had a name Um, because you know in a great free jazz record any of the ones I'm posting here which I don't like the term free jazz 
I think it's, I really like creative improvisational music. People say it doesn't swing. All these records swing. You can put on any art ensemble record and within any of the tunes, there are sections where they play, they're swinging, but they don't just leave it at that. They swing, they play ragtime, they play waltzes, they play marches, they play indigenous music where they refer to Africa or, or South America. It is such beautiful, deep music. And I used to just say to people, if you want to get into free jazz, just you know, just let it flow over you like a wave. And, and I really do think you have to hang up your hang-ups, as they used to say, um, and not come to it with preconditions. And it's funny to me, you know, you, if you think that hard bop is like cool and hip and, you know, the true sound of the people. Really, if anything, those cats were all wearing suits. When the free jazz movement came along, there were no more suits. There was no paying homage to... Uh, the establishment or to the man or even traditional forms that was that was the idea of free jazz we're going to do away with these forms and I think they didn't really do away with them they broadened them they instilled them in their being you know there's an interesting concept if you're a musician as I was for many years you can play things literally or you can imply these things I would say, you know, everything on any Blue Note record, everything is played literally. You have very standard forms or prestige or milestone or uh, any traditional, what we think of a standard jazz label. Uh, even today, um, there's a, still a very traditional form that is followed by most jazz musicians. But particularly in the hard bop area, we have an intro, we have a head. We have verses, we have choruses, we have bridge, we have vamps, we go back to the head where we're at. It's kind of a straitjacket if you th think about it. And all the rhythms are based on swing rhythms, but they're all, everything is very much in a box. As where if you listen to an art ensemble record or an Old and New Dreams record with, uh, you know, Don Cherry and Charlie Hayden and those guys, or a great Dewey Redman record, um, or even if you go you know, to Europe, if you listen to Keith Tippett, uh, which I have a few of his records, or all the great stuff on the Incas label, I mean, you are hearing really beautiful collective improvisations. You're hearing the history of jazz, but you're hearing a lot more than that among the really great players. Um, you know, if, if some of it, if you're coming, like there is the John Cage school going into Anthony Braxton, and that becomes too cerebral for me. I can't. And it, it's just too cerebral, it's too heady. Um, that's what I love about Archie Shep. All the Archie Shep albums on Impulse swing their butts off. And later when he plays with the Contemporary Five, that stuff is swinging hard and it's loose and it's so joyous. The records that uh, Archie Shep did with Bill Dixon, those are just astounding. And if you go back, you know, a lot of the stuff, in a way, you can also hear it in the work of, of uh, Mingus and Max Roach, obviously, um, on through Coltrane. But really, post Eiler and Ornette Coleman, the music just opens up. I think there's so much color and beauty in this music, and it does swing, and it's deeply tied to the people of the communities this music grew out of. I mean, the uh, AACM, and I always get the words wrong, Advanced Association for Creative Musicians, I mean, that is so much amazing music. It's just a wealth there. And that's the other great thing, you know, as much as I love hard bop, it's really just, a, it's like a stamp-sized uh, vision of what music was. And we, we dig it, it's easy to enjoy because it's it's got a groove, uh, easily relatable melodies, you have beautiful soloists, everybody on the Blue Note label, on the contemporary label, prestige, you have all this great classic music. But it's all of a piece, it's all of a whole, it's a certain thing but if you open your mind to get into free jazz and all you have to do is do a google search there are so many articles that deal with free jazz or spiritual jazz as they like to call it there's so much to get into and it's so easy to enjoy i mean who would not like an alice coltrane record all those beautiful strings and her beautiful harp playing there's so much depth there um archie shep is so joyous i love the work of han bennick it is similarly joyous uh, Misha Mengelberg, uh, Cerebral, but th that music swung so hard. Uh, and these records, 
are hard to find, and I didn't realize till I started pulling all these out how many of them I own that I bought from the Jazz Collective uh, Jazz Record Center through all these years that I've worked there. I used to work there in the 90s full time, but about the last 10 years, I guess, geez, I just work on Saturdays. And lately, I don't work there at all because the store is closed. But I really uh, urge all of you to you know, open your eyes, open your minds. You can hear a lot of this stuff on Spotify. Uh, and it's really, really amazing music. And it gives back so much to you. There's so much richness and so much depth in this music. Um, and it casts a spell. Once you let, can, let go of the idea that you've got to hear two and four all the time, um, that's what I was talking about as far as playing things literally and playing things implied. Hard bop, you know, popular commercial music is all very literal, so you can't miss it. But beautiful music that, that draws on the universe, if you want to say it, is all about inferences, the way it implies things. And that's what uh, the best spiritual jazz does, or free jazz. It implies a world of color and emotions and rhythms. I mean, we all know where the downbeat is. You don't always have to play it, you know? Um, so it really frees your imagination. It's very free jazz is very freeing music, and it really gives back to you as much as you'll uh, put into hearing it, which is really just you know letting go of preconditions that everything has to have a two and a four groove or follow established standards. And again, the thing about free jazz that it really sh- that amazes me is it's never stopped. Uh, the Clean Feeds label out of, I believe, Portugal or Spain, they put out nothing but free jazz, essentially. And they put out so much music. It's really astounding. There is an incredible depth and richness to this music. And I plead with you. I ask you to open your ears because there is more to the world, more to jazz than hard bop.